Hello everyone, this is Shadi Reyes and this is SIF 2021. With me is Dr. Abdul Qadir Al Manfi. He is Director of Structural Heart at Mercy Health in Paducah, Kentucky. Dr. Al Manfi, thanks for being with us. Nice oh, to see you as pleasure. a friend, as a person during SIF 2021. Thank you, Shadi. Um, recent updates from the Structural Heart guidelines came recently. What is your uh, top highlights? Yes, so uh, the ACC and HA uh, has published the guidelines in December 2020, which was really um, uh, uh, interesting to uh, read and understand, and it's actually practice changing. Basically, the, 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 the writing committee came up with a new set of guidelines, including TAVR and MitraClib, and including those on the decision. Uh, so there is emphasis on the heart team, um, heart team decision, and involving shared decision with the patient. Uh, basically, the, 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 for the first time, the guidelines has placed TAVR in a class 1A indication. Uh, before that, the case there was 2A, and for, for this is a new change. Uh, also, the TAVR uh, guidelines came up also with the age recommendation uh, based on where is the patient age right now and what's the life expectancy. So they have different set for uh, people who are below 65, uh, favoring surgery more, and uh, between 65 and 80, uh, uh, looking at both options as, as viable option, TAVR and SAV are based on the anatomy and risk assessment and shared decision with the patient. And for everyone above 80, uh, TAVR has the priority as, as an option. So uh, even for late ages than 60, low risk, TAVR is still class one? So uh, 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 65 is the cut, 65. 65. And, uh, and uh, uh, above 65, you still have TAVR as an option provided that your anatomy is suitable for TAVR. Yes. Because you don't want to trade, uh, trade uh, low-risk surgery for a high-risk TAVR. Let's say, for example, there is a um, uh, low coronary height uh, or there is a difficult access. It's not transfemoral, it's not straightforward TAVR. Probably you might get, a, get, get, get easily by low-risk surgery, Correct. especially if your center does minimalist approach or, or minimally invasive surgical option. Right. Uh, so uh, uh, it really changed the way we look at TAVR now. more clearance to what to exactly. do with Exactly, more clearance and also more uh, team shared decision. So uh, there's no patient nowadays should go to the OR or to the cath lab without discussion with the team, meaning involving the interventional cardiology and, uh, and the uh, CT surgery and the rest of the team to, and also the patient, of course, and their wish uh, before we jump into an operation that's... Uh, uh, and, and I think this will reflect very positively on the outcomes and, and on the quality of our work. Um, um, uh, I see that as very positive, uh, honestly. I think uh, it's time to change because uh, with the new studies, especially for intermediate and low risk, has been coming a lot back to back. Correct. So That's I correct. think it was timely to come up with the guidelines. That's correct. To kind of uh, reconcile all the publication and trials. Yes. That's, that's absolutely right. The, the other updates which I see it as a positive in terms of transcatheter therapy is the MitraClib. Uh, so uh, as you know, MitraClib was approved uh, a few years ago for, uh, for uh, functional MR, uh, sorry, for generative MR uh, uh, with, uh, with high risk or extreme risk for surgery. Now the guidelines has, has been updated to, to uh, include MitraClib as an option. I think it's a class 2A uh, as an option to, uh, for people with functional MR. Uh, meaning the patient has congestive heart failure, they have been placed on medical therapy, optimized medical therapy under uh, a, a heart failure specialist. And if they still have continued to have severe MR with symptoms, then you can add the clip as an option. Correct. Uh, that was not in the guidelines before, so this is That's a major, major uh, 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 add to the, to the practice and nowadays. So let's shift gear. Maybe this guideline helped you, but now you started a new role and a new place. Yes. What was, and during COVID-19, yes. so what are the challenges that you faced? Well, it was a challenging year for everyone uh, on the planet, I believe, <laughs> uh, uh, us included. I mean, we at Mercy Lord's Hospital in, in Paducah, Kentucky, it's a very un unique location for us because our area was uh, looking for to start a structural program, or hospital specifically wants to start a structural program for many years. And me joining there, uh, I think in the end of, end of uh, 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 end of September, October, uh, September, September last, oh, year, last year, made us uh, basically start the program. Starting a program is not easy job, as you know, and uh, the, the, the biggest challenge for me is to build the team before I even start thinking about doing cases. So uh, that took a quite part of us to have, you know, uh, 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 my, my CT surgeon on board, yes. and I ha I'm lucky to have uh, my partner, Jim O'Rourke. He's a fantastic surgeon for 30 years, very experienced, you know, surgeon. Also, uh, with, with my experience and building, you know, nurse practitioners on the team and uh, valve coordinator, 
uh, getting anesthesia on board, getting the rest of the cardiology group. So it was a quite a journey, but we were successful in, in implementing a very uh, robust program so far. We had uh, TAVERS, we have both valves, Cor Corvalve. And, and the, the volume was been stable because we were joining maybe around the second peak. Correct, yeah. that, that's correct. We had our issues with bid capacity, with, with the challenge with bid capacity, you know, because of the COVID was the second peak. And, uh, we were able to navigate through it by uh, hopefully you know, discharging everybody next day. Uh, we have to pro postpone cases, of course, because of Absolutely. COVID, yeah. and some patients actually got COVID, so you have to wait for uh, you know a month so they can be negative and then be done. Uh, but uh, I think we're easing up now toward the end of COVID era, hopefully. Um, we also were able to impl implement uh, Maestra Clip and uh, Watchmen and PFO closure. Yeah. So what it's now comprehensive program. Absolutely. Well, that's really, you pulled a pro successful program and a challenging time. I don't think anybody will have this again well, in their thank, career. Uh, uh, thank you Especially so much. an early career. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks for your time. And thanks for educating us uh, about the guidelines that my, was recently uh, my, my published. My pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Dr. Al-Manfi, and uh, please watch this video and others on SIF YouTube channel. This is Shadi Reyes from SIF 2021. Dr. Al-Manfi, thank you. Thank you, Shadi. I appreciate it.